from a car that started off just as a trim option for a separate model to become its own model later on and steal the hearts of millions of car enthusiasts around the world and to finally be accepted as a, one of the lineups for Toyota's racing division, Gazoo Racing. A racing team that doesn't have that much history but has an amazing track record. We're talking about the Toyota GR Supra, and we're pitting it against a car that originally came out in 1963. Most people don't know it came out that year because so few units were made since the GM racing ban went into effect that year. To only come back 33 years later in the C4 generation of Corvette, we're talking about the Grand Sport Corvette, but specifically the C7 Grand Sport Corvette. We're pitting against the Toyota GR Supra. This is paid performance. Let's get into it. As always, we're going to start off with the engines in both of these vehicles. Now, we all know the iconic engine that came beforehand in the Mark IV Supra. It was the 2JZ. That engine is iconic because it is so reliable and durable that if you know what you're doing, you can easily get 2,000 horsepower out of it, which is amazing. Now, in the Mark V Supra, we do not have the 2JZ. As you well know, we have the engine from BMW, the B58. Now, this engine is quite good, and it can put down impressive numbers if you know what you're doing when it comes to modifying it. And we're going to show you exactly that by someone who knows what they're doing, a legend named Stefan Papadakis. You might have heard of him. But before we do that, let's find out exactly what we're dealing with with the stock engine. It is a turbocharged inline six that has a three liter displacement and it puts down a healthy amount of power. This is compared to the iconic LT1 engine, which is a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 that is inside the Grand Sport. This Grand Sport starts off strong by putting down 460 horsepower. This is compared to the 382 horsepower that the GR Supra 3.0 makes. It also keeps up this streak when it comes to the torque. Torque wise, we're looking at 465 foot pounds of torque versus the 368 foot pounds of torque via the Supra. Now you might be wondering to yourself, well, why exactly are these pitted up against each other? Because they seem wildly different, but you're gonna see later on with the performance, they're not that different. When it comes to the weight though, Super does take it at 3,343 pounds, just a little bit lighter compared to the Grand Sport. The Grand Sport keeps it pretty light at 3,483 pounds. To put that into perspective, the C8 Z06 Corvette weighs a pretty hefty 3,666 pounds. And it's much slimmer, at least it looks slimmer, than the C7 Corvette. So the C7 Corvette is keeping down the weight quite well. This brings us to the peak horsepower and Super continues on with the winds at 6,500 RPM where the peak horsepower is made compared to the 6,000 RPM that the Grand Sport makes its peak horsepower. This also continues with the peak torque. Peak torque for the Supra is made way down low at 1,800 RPM. That is super low, especially when it's compared to the Grand Sport at 4,000 600 rpm a huge difference and an easy win when it comes to the supra zero to 60 this is where it gets really interesting and why i thought this was a good matchup including the price later on but zero to 60 the supra does it in an impressive 3.9 seconds now the grand sport is a 2017 when you bought it brand new you could get the exact same zero to 60 time 3.9 seconds but that was six years ago. Nowadays, you're gonna get a four second zero to 60. You lost a tenth of a second, but that's not too bad. And I don't see that as a knock against the Grand Sport. However, this category does go to the Supra. The core amount of time though, does go to the Grand Sport with 12.3 seconds versus the 12.4 seconds for the Supra. It's very close, just like the zero to 60, but each one traded off. Supra takes the zero to 60, Grand Sport takes the quarter mile time. Now, before I get into the prices, I do want to show you guys what these engines are capable of in the right hands. To 
do that, we're going to go ahead and look at two very famous builders. First of all, Stefan Papadakis for the Supra. Now, he did take a modern day Supra, a Mark V Supra, tear it down to the last bolt when it came to the engine bay and rebuilt it. A list of some of the new things added to the engine, a ported head, new crankshaft, I-beam rods, as well as a Borg Warner EFR 9280 turbo and 2000 cc dynamic injectors now these are just a few of the highlights that were added to this engine but if you want to go ahead and check it out i can link it in the description below so you guys can see everything that he did do to the engine as well as all the detailed information so go ahead and check that out in the description down below but to put this into perspective he was able to take the 382 horsepower and bump it up to 1095 horsepower from the B58 engine. And he took the torque that was 368 foot-pounds of torque and turned it all the way up to 950 foot-pounds of torque. Obviously, this engine is very capable of putting down impressive horsepower ratings in the right hands. This brings us to the C7 Grand Sport. Now, obviously, who else took care of this besides Hennessy Performance? Now, Hennessy made this a 750 horsepower beast by adding a few different things. For example, he started off with a high flow centrifugal supercharger, as well as CNC ported heads, lightweight valves, heavy duty valve springs, and HPE camshaft. Again, this made 751 horsepower at 6,300 RPM and 734 foot pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. A noticeable difference from the standards 460 horsepower and 465 foot pounds of torque. Again, if you guys want to see exactly what they did, I will go ahead and link my sources down in the description below. But obviously, this bump in horsepower did not just show in the numbers, but also in the performance of the C7 Grand Sport bringing the zero to 60 all the way down to three seconds flat and the quarter mile to 10.7 seconds. That's almost a full two seconds faster than the standard Grand Sport. So obviously with both of these engines, they have a lot to offer if you are in the market to doing your own upgrades or having a shop do it for you. Personally, I always enjoy doing hands-on work because I like to learn. I'm new to it and I might as well throw myself into the middle of it and see if I sink or swim. That's how I do things. But this brings us to the power to weight ratio. Now this power to weight ratio is the stock power to weight ratio. Starting off with the Supra, the GR Supra has a power to weight ratio of 1.14 horsepower per 10 pounds. Now this is less than the Grand Sport, which is 1.32 horsepower per 10 pounds. Now I think this is interesting because performance wise, zero to 60 and the quarter mile time, these things are pretty much dead even. Also, it is important to remember that both of these are manuals. The Grand Sport is sporting a seven speed manual while the GR Supra has a six speed manual and they both have Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires as well. Now this brings us to the lap times. We both had the lap times of the Lightning laps from Car and Driver as well as the Nürburgring. Now, the Grand Sport does not have an official Nürburgring time. It's just not official, all right? So take that with a grain of salt, but the lightning laps, you can definitely go ahead and take that and use that because they are official. Starting off first with the GR Supra, it puts down a lightning lap of two minutes and 55.6 seconds. Now that's really good, but compared to the Grand Sport, it kind of is slow. The Grand Sport put down a lightning lap of two minutes and 47.1 seconds, which is very impressive. Again, the lightning lap is official, but the Nürburgring isn't. The Nürburgring for the Grand Sport, seven minutes and 27 seconds. This is not an official time, but this is compared, if you wanna take that with a grain of salt, to the Supra, the GR Supra, that did it in seven minutes and 52.17 seconds. Both of these do very well when it comes to track, but the Grand Sport does take it in both the Nürburgring and also the Lightning Laps. This leads us to the price for both of these vehicles. Now, you do have a choice of getting an older model Supra, and that does change the numbers. But of course, you're dealing with a used Grand Sport, and used Grand Sports are going around sixty dollars to $70,000 right now. They held on to their price pretty well, 
but I'd still say that's a pretty good deal compared to a brand new 2023 GR Supra which comes out to around fifty to $60,000, meaning that the prices overlap. And that's why I thought that this was such a good lineup because the prices are pretty close. Obviously you're being, paying about the same amount for a used car as you would a new car, but you are getting more performance in a better track car overall based off the numbers alone. So let me know which one would you guys have? Personally, I like Corvettes. I really do. I'd probably go with the Corvette. I love the Supra. I think the Supra actually looks pretty good. And I wouldn't mind getting a Rocket Buddy wide kit on that thing. That would look fantastic. But personally, I think I would go with the Corvette. It's kind of close, but I feel pretty strong about that. So let me know in the comment section which one you guys would go with. Also, let me know if you like these videos by giving a like and subscribing for future content. We have other content that will go further in depth on a single model through the years to see exactly how far we've come when it comes to technology and performance. And also we're gonna be doing some making beaters better in the future, which is gonna happen soon. I've been really busy when it comes to the flips and I will definitely start uploading some more videos about that. But so far I've already sold another car and you haven't even seen that one just yet. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and let you guys know about how that one went later on in a short. So. Always remember this, respect the speed, enjoy the journey, and love those around you. I'll see you guys next time.